In this video, we'll be introducing kinematics. Our case study will be the American Kestrel, a small falcon known to fly at speeds of 90 km per hour. What do we mean when we say 90 km per hour? Is this speed or is this velocity? It's actually speed. And let's see why. We can describe the Castro's motion in terms of its speed or in terms of its velocity. Speed, this is the distance traveled by an object divided by the total time. But for velocity, this is the displacement of an object divided by the total time. Displacement is the difference in distance between the starting position and the final position of the Castrol. Remember that speed is actually a scalar, that is, it has only magnitude and no direction. On the other hand, velocity is a vector. It has magnitude and direction. And in order to talk about the Castro's velocity in kinematics, we'll have to say that it travels 90 km per hour northwards, or maybe eastwards. In other words, we would need to give a direction. So in physics, we often use a coordinate graph and label one direction as negative and the other as positive. Let's say that you're a field biologist interested in this bird's flight, such as how far it flies from a certain point. Or perhaps you're interested in how fast it flies or changes direction. Or how fast it accelerates if it decides to dive down to catch prey. So how do we translate this motion into the language of physics? Let's talk about displacement first. So if the falcon flies from position A to position B, then this is called a displacement. It's telling us the difference in distance, which is position B minus position A. So the arc here is actually the total distance traveled by the Kestrel. This is not the displacement. For displacement, we only take the distance of a straight line connecting the two points. So, this is different from the total distance traveled if the motion is not along a straight line. Now, we know its difference in distance and we want to know how fast it flies per unit time. And let's say that it's moving to the right or towards the positive direction. We are going to call this its velocity, which is the displacement over the total time. Let's say that the falcon sees some prey and dives down suddenly at full speed. If it's changing its direction and magnitude, it's accelerating. This is just a change in velocity. So acceleration is the change in velocity over time. To catch the prey, it needs to slow down, otherwise it would end up hitting the ground. So let's throw in Newton's second law to explain this briefly. Recall that the law says that force and acceleration are related. What's slowing the bird down? Well, in this case, it's the air on its wings creating a force backwards, which we will call drag. The drag force backwards is much greater than any forward force, which is causing the acceleration backwards. In other words, it's slowing down the falcon. For this point, the bird is actually trying to minimize drag so that it can accelerate downwards. You can see this by the way the falcon tries to create a streamlined shape to minimize air resistance. In this case, the force of gravity is also much greater than the drag force, so acceleration is downwards. But up to this point, 
it needs to slow down, otherwise it would end up hitting the ground. This might be hard to understand, because you might assume that acceleration is always in the forward direction of motion. But in this case, in order for the Falcon to slow down, acceleration must be backwards, because there is a greater force backwards. Remember that acceleration is a change in velocity, so slowing down means that the velocity, at a later date, has a smaller magnitude. So let's review. We talked about displacement, which is the change in position. If we want to know how fast the Kestrel flies, we're talking about a change in displacement, which is velocity. And now, if this velocity changes, then we have acceleration. So in the next video, we'll be working with numbers and variables to further describe this motion. See you then.